Is it at this point that I say this is the best group I've ever seen do it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, and I'm not taking the mickey out of you, for a group who have half who've done this and half who haven't, I would suggest that you're going pretty well, even off that little period of time. Um, now, a couple of points that were raised as we were doing this and things I may have forgotten to mention or people have brought up. One is, and I think I mentioned to most groups, on the outside of your foot, about halfway down, there's a little bony prominence. That's the head of the fifth metatarsal. When you're taping, you don't want to tape over or past that point. And the reason being is that the compression of the bones within your foot can change the biomechanics of the foot, which in turn changes your gait pattern, which in turn can increase your risk of soft tissue injury. As, putting it very simply. Um, a couple of other ones. Who found it difficult to tear this stuff? Anyone? Um, when you tear, and Andrew just made this point, and I didn't even think about it. So you're saying that people are trying to tear into the adhesive. So on the sticky side, like you're trying to pull it down towards the sticky side, that will make it harder. If you grip it and pull it away, it will work easier. So I apologise if I didn't make that out to you before. And another good point that was raised by one, someone in a group is this. This stuff does have a shelf life. So if you leave it in your first aid kit and this roll sits at the bottom all year and then you try and pull it out, it's not really going to work for you. It's going to be either really tacky and you can't pull it off or it won't tear properly or you'll actually see some of the adhesive starting to come through on the brown side of it and you can see the white marks on it. It's best places in the bin. So try and just roll your tape over semi-regularly. The um, other thing is keep it out of direct heat and direct sunlight. Yeah, so that's my next point. I had a um, brand new bag full of stuff, thanks to Victor, and I left it in my ute over summer, and I left it there for two days, and I went and got it after two hot days, and it was all stuffed. I had to throw it out and go and get it, because it was no good, same sort of thing. Rightio, any questions on the ankle taping? Yeah, good luck. Um, <laughs> oh, oh, you can take my angle if you like and do it. But essentially, yeah, and I know exactly what you mean. Someone with a little bit meat, more meat on them, it's easier for the tape to conform to. Skinny little angles that are really bony, whether it be juniors, women, seniors, doesn't matter, are pretty difficult. So that's where you've got to take just that little bit more time and make sure that after every strip you put on, you try and rub it on and make sure it conforms properly. Yeah. Any other questions on that? Sorry, I'll come. You go. You mentioned how we got to take past the fifth metatarsal. Metatarsal? Yep, head of the fifth metatarsal. Yeah, how, how did I know, how did you know where that was? So, on the outside of your foot, about halfway down, there's a little bony prominence. And you'll find it on just about everyone. You'll be able to see it or feel it. In fact, I can see it from here. Right there, that's it. Yep, that's the one. Yeah. Is it true if you that's a great question. That's a great question. There are two schools of thought on this. If we use tape all the time, they become reliant, therefore we weaken the ankles. The reality is, is that if you are taping all the time, but they, they, the athlete, are doing some form of proprioceptive work without shoes on, so it could be balance board, it could be standing on one foot, focusing on a point, or it could be just walking around on slightly uneven ground, like on the grass outside without any shoes on or running around, they're probably going to be okay because you'll still be strengthening those joints without actually realising it. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Rightio. Now that you're all happy with that, our next topic that we had, when I find that little clicker, is knees. Now if we were to spend the appropriate amount of time on knees we'd be here for another six hours, probably, if I showed you everything right now. But what I think I can show you, and in fact I know I can show you, is a couple of very basic ways of taping, which the principles, regardless of whether it's the anterior cruciate ligament or the posterior cruciate ligament, so the ones that cross over at the back, and the ACL is the one you hear of in footy where guys have 12 months out when they've ruptured that, um, or whether it's the medial collateral or lateral collateral ligaments. It doesn't matter. The taping is essentially exactly the same, just positioned slightly different. The steps are exactly the same. So once you know one, you can do it for all four of those areas. 
So that's what we're going to work on now. Now there are other conditions within the knee that we can talk about, whether it's Oshkod slatters in kids, or whether it's sprinter's knee, or whether it's fat pad impingement and all those sorts of things, but we're not going to go there because that's just not, and it wouldn't be fair on you guys to go there in the space of half an hour because you just walk out going, I've got nothing out of that. I've just been mind blown, I've got nothing. So we're going to go with this. Ideas about what causes injuries to knees. Throw some at me. Um, just a simple tackle by three on one and your stops for again to stay in the dirt and then you need to risk the ACL kind of like this really. That happened to you? Yeah. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So the, the typical, typical ACL stuff is exactly that. Foot planted, um, force transitioning across and twisting, in a sense, or that landing and going, oh, there it is. Um, the PCL, or the posterior one, that's more hyperextension of the knee. So that's landing on a straight leg, and oh, there, there's that one, my knee's hyperextended. Um, the medial ligament, normally goes in conjunction with your ACL, nine times out of 10 you'll do both because of that shearing force. But essentially the medial ligament, if you get foot planted and any impact to that outside of your leg and you get that sort of buckling of the knee inwards, that can stretch those medial ligaments and vice versa, the same way for the lateral ones. But they're a little bit more difficult to do because of the muscular structures along the outside of the leg. So, taping wise, what do we need? This time we're going to use our five or centimetre fix or a fix 50. We're going to use a little bit of our fix 100. 38 mil rigid again. Now some people say, why don't you use 50 mil rigid on knees for those guys who've done it before? Has anyone used 50 mil? Great, I'll put it back over there. I don't have to answer that question. 38 is much, e much easier to work with. And again, it's your standard tape in your kit. And then, potentially, either our stretcher or our blood tape as an overwrap for a bit more support. And also, we're using different strips of tape in different directions. So if we don't cover it up, it's more than likely going to peel off once you start sweating and getting tackled and doing all those sorts of things. Any volunteers? We can do it over, for the, for the sake of the demonstration, we can do it over shorts and pants and what have you tonight. Audio. So, I'm going to get you to stand up actually. So do you want to stand at the front for me? Any preference on what area we tape out of those four areas that we just spoke about? Let's, let's do the typical ACL slash PCL taping. So it can be used for either or, and this is your one you can use, and we'll do it from a hyperextension point of view. So when you don't want them to fully extend their knee because they've stretched that PCL ligament in a sense. What we need to do is we need to get a strip of fix, which is long enough to go, it's fine, I can just go over this way, around <coughs> like so. Now it doesn't have to go all the way around. In actual fact, I would leave a gap at the front. Any ideas why? Yeah, so when, you, when you're flexing, extending your knee and your quads are contracting and relaxing, it's not going to be as restrictive on them. So that's exactly right. Now before we gave you those fixed squares and we said just pull a bit of paper off because it was only yay big, if you try and pull all this paper off now and then wrap it around, you're laughing. <laughs> It could go anywhere and it could end up looking terrible too. So what we're going to do is we're going to just attach the first one. I'm just going to pull the paper off as I go around, which is something you'll get used to doing. And it will still crease a little bit. No doubt about that. Like so. Now the next one is exactly the same. And I've just gone against what I just said. <laughs> And we're going to go just below that knee joint. And again, I don't mind leaving a little gap at the front. It doesn't bother me. It's here or there. Now what I'm going to need you to do is turn around and face that wall for me. And if everyone wants to come and you might be able to see where you are. If I'm... Do you wear orthotics? Sorry? Do you wear orthotics? No. You probably should. <laughs> <laughs> I know it sounds harsh. I'm just looking at, and the reason I'm saying this is because of the angle of her leg right here. 
is that that would actually put more stress on that medial ligament anyway, in a sporting sense. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're trying to stop hyperextension of that joint. Now, did someone have my scissors before? They are down there. Yeah, just chuck them. <laughs> <laughs> Rightio. Now, behind the knee is a very, very sensitive area of skin. So if we go putting our rigid tape on, it's not going to work for us. They're going to get irritated and maybe get the skin cut. So I just need to do that there. Now, the next thing we're going to do, we've got our two anchors. What we're going to do is put one, two, maybe five strips of this on. But that's going to prevent any irritation whatsoever behind the back of the knee. And it's also going to give us the old theory of tape sticks better to tape. So we're going to get better support from that. It literally is, to start with, a cross. And in an ideal world, once you know what you're doing with your athlete, you can prep all this before they even come in to get taped. So we're attaching on the outside of the leg or the lateral aspect, about middle of that joint line if you like. Straight across and around, like so. Did I have another one there? Now some will argue that doing all this fix is a bit of a waste, um, but personally I find that I get a better response from the athlete when I do it, just from a comfort level and that tape staying on. Now you can then decide, if you like, what we're going to do next is just a few strips straight along, overlapping. So you can do three or four of those, or if you feel comfortable, you can just take one stripper. 10 centimetre and do it. Okay. That's our base, if you like. Now, if we're thinking about trying to stop hyperextension, her knee at the moment looks like it's pretty much in full extension, doesn't it? Mm. So we don't want her to get to that point. In a sporting sense, we still need her to be functional, but we don't want to get to that point. So can you just bend your knee a little bit for me? Perfect. It's about all you need. It's just a slight bend. How easy is it, do you think, for me to keep her in that position with her knee slightly bent without moving it straight back and like the joint? Difficult? You know those little wedges you shove under your door, the little plastic ones? Perfect, underneath her heel. And then that just tilts her foot up, which in turn makes her go in that position. Or when all else fails, just lift your heel up. The only problem with that is if there's any weight under it, it can actually squash your tape down. So, up to you. Rightio, what we're doing is we're going to stop this hyperextension. Slight little bend for me. There you go. Those, that cross that we did with the fix, we're just going to repeat that. So we're going to attach here. <coughs> Pull across the back. Now, <coughs> tension needs to be a bit because we're trying to stop her from coming all the way back. And you can see now the importance of having that under wrap given the amount of tension we're putting on it. That serrated edge on that would start to cut her pretty quickly once she started moving. I'm going to do two of these each way. <coughs> Just slightly overlapping them. Okay, there's a the basis of our support right there. Now what we're going to do is put some vertical strips on just to really lock it out. Now when you put these on, you want to make them slightly shorter than the distance between these two points. And the reason being, is I'm going to attach it down and I'm going to pull down on it while I'm holding the top end. And at the end, now it's going to be slightly less because we're on our tracky bands there a bit on skin, just going to overlap. But what you'll start to see occurring 
is a bit of a drum effect there. So there is a bit of a gap. And then all we're going to do is just go back the other way and do exactly the same thing. <coughs> we'll probably get away with one more. Okay, so that's the basis of our support there. Yeah, I'm just going to get you to turn around, so just pop that out. Can you see that? Yep. Yep, do you want to go down this way for us? How many nodes do you One, two, three, four, five, seven or eight? Yeah. Um, only because we're trying to give as much support as we possibly can. Yeah. Now, on top of that, sorry, I'll put that right back in there. It'll be a bit easy for you. If I want to then provide more support, I will then just rehash over those crosses to start with. So I'll <laughs> pop another one on, come around the back with a fair bit of tension on again. Like so. Now, I'd like to think that was it, but it's not. Because if you imagine if we just leave it like that, what's going to happen? It's just going to come off, isn't it? So, my go-to is this over the stretch because it's easy to move in for the athlete. However, if they feel like they want more support, then you will go with that 75 mil stretch. And essentially now, all you need to do is just cover in and follow those lines of those crosses, essentially. And you might do, for mine, you're probably going to do a couple and then just lock it off. Do you want to spin around so they can see that one? Now you can't fully extend your knee obviously if you try. You'll go close. You'll go close, but it will be the idea is it's restricting that end range where you're just gonna have that where that damage has occurred. Now, because we've taped over your trackies, we're probably gonna lose a bit of that restriction of movement. Second to that, we can put more tape on if we need to and go harder at that. Or we could then use the stretch over the top, which would put you in that position a bit more. Any questions on that? Um, so Not much, yeah, because we're only trying to stop the extension in this instance, if you like. If you're then trying to stop the lateral and medial ligaments, you essentially apply the same taping, but just over those areas and using the patella as your guide. So if you were doing a lateral ligament, for example, now bear with me because I'm going over the top of what's already there. Is you would one and two. Same thing again, just crossing over. The difference being with the lateral and medial ligaments is you're probably not going to get that drum effect there, so to speak. You're just going to get the tape <coughs> on flat. I'm trying to spin around so I can see that on the other way, sorry. You see what I mean by it's exactly the same taping, just in a different position? If they had a lateral medial pre-CL combination, then you would, but the likelihood of that's pretty unlikely. It's probably going to be one or the other. It might be just a lateral where you would just do this and then maybe put your blood tape over the top. Or they might have a combination of the PCL medial if you like and you do the same thing. The point of this is that there's actually no, there are lots of, you can see different lots of ways to do this, but this is really effective. You're not using truckloads of tape realistically out of the rigid and it provides you with all the support you need. Um, you'll get, you could possibly get shown other ways to do it, no doubt, but these are the ways that we're doing it and this is the way we find it really effective and it feels comfortable for those players as well. Questions?
No? So maybe one. When you said earlier on, if you know the athletes coming in and you can pre cut them, is that really like a pre cut length, one fits all? Or? No, so it would be individual dependent. Um, I'll give you an example one of our guys who has had some knee issues in the past, and I won't name names, but essentially I know off this that I need one strip of nine squares in between those solid blue lines, if you like, is one square. And then for the next one I know eight, and then I need four fives and six sevens. Do you know what I mean? And I just have them pre-cut. Same as you would have those, these 10 centimetre squares pre-cut, in a sense, for ankles, and just leave them stacked up. So it saves you a hell of a lot of time, and it's just easy to go. The, the benefit of doing that too is that if you then know you might have to retape at half time, it's actually all sitting there, ready to go. So in terms of time wasting, you're not really wasting much time at all. <coughs> Any other further questions on that one? With, um, you have the hypoallergenic stuff underneath there. Yep. It's like a somewhat main Nah, no, nah, mate, I don't. And the reason being, and it's a bit from experience and personal choice, is that fine if you then go and wrap this all the way around the quad, it's actually a bit restrictive. So that's why we even with the anchor, we don't go all the way around. Um, if you wanted to be super neat, you'd probably put this beautiful little anchor around and then do it and then another one. But the reality is, you're gonna overwrap it. No one's gonna see it. <laughs> so even if I hear a bit OCD about it, no, as long as you get this one right over the top, no dramas. Um, as long as it's functionally doing what it's supposed to do, yeah, it is more comfortable than having a rigid anchor, and it's probably going to stick better. Probably functionally, you, you, you might wrap a rigid anchor over the top of the stretch, though. That's a good point. Just, just to lock in yeah, sorry. Wherever that stretch finishes, you would always put a bit of rigid over the end, and just a little trick that can still peel away. Well, sometimes when you put this tape on. As they start playing, it can fold down. Has anyone ever seen that? Who's that? It folds down. The sneaky way with that is get your, I'm going to pretend, I'll turn it around. That's your Kramer Tough Skin Spray, which it's actually not, but it is. And just really lightly from about, I don't know, 15 centimetres away, just lightly spray around from, say, here to here. So you're covering the top sort of third there. Give it 10 seconds to dry. And then just <coughs> do that and it won't come off, it won't. With the adhesive spray, it won't move. It'll stop that rolling down. And again, you're not going all the way around, so it's not restricting the hamstrings and the quads in the way that you think that might if you fashioned it all the way around. Any other questions? Rightio. Matt, yep. just quickly, okay, when we started off, there was the why, why are you, why are you yep. doing it? The one why that I want to know, why is it that more of these over extensions happening in the present day than there were parts of the getting faster and so on and so forth. That's a very good question. What's that, mate? I, so, oh, I thought you said something. Um, I, have I, I have my own theories too, but in summary, I think you'll find that the way the game's played now compared to 20 years ago, 30 years ago, is a lot quicker. And the thing that I've noticed a lot is that people try to emulate, and when I say people, it's generally the players, but also the support around them, try to emulate the AFL and what they see on tally. And that's not always the correct way of doing things, if you like. And so it might be the training, it might be the game style, it might be a whole range of stuff, it might be ground conditions, it could be boots, it's, there's a whole range of things that you go down, but probably game style a little bit and trying to emulate what you see on tally, which sometimes what you see, it's a bit like what you read in the paper, it's not always true or correct, particularly when you're talking about footy clubs. Any other questions on that? When are you doing this, like, I suppose, in your situation? Are you doing it um, sort of season to keep the guys going, or are you doing it pre-off or post-off? No, nah, so you, good question. When we're doing these types of tables, <coughs> it's when they've had some form of injury. Now, sometimes it's to keep them going, and it could be in the middle of a game. Um, sometimes it could be they've had the injury on the weekend and we've given them a few days off and rehab, and now we're starting to get them running again and we want to protect them from any further injury. Um, 
if they've had an op, yes, but only when they start to get back into that change of direction and or contact based stuff would we then do that. Um, and some guys have to do this for training. And what, like all taping, it becomes a bit of a security blanket for a lot of guys. So there's a psychological overlay with everything that we do and sometimes it's not doing heaps in terms of functionality but it feels good and if it feels good then I feel safe and then I'm happy to play. So you've got to factor that one in as well. 